Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. If you saw last week's video of my visit to the silos in Waco, Texas, then you know what's coming today. That's right, I'm going to be duping many of the high-priced Magnolia home decor items for a fraction of the price. I can't wait for you to see what I came up with. So let's get started. Let's begin with a really easy project, the Distressed Book Bundle. The bundles at Magnolia looked like one hardback and three paperback books were used. So that's what I used too. All you need to do is find four old books around your house or from a thrift store. Rip off the covers. You might also want to rip off the first couple pages and the last couple pages of the book, especially if someone has written on those pages. I used a flat razor blade to help remove some of the glue along the binding. Then you're ready to take your four books and tie them up with a piece of twine. That was so easy. It took less than five minutes, and I think they look super cute. It's unbelievable to me that Magnolia was charging $32 for this same type of book bundle. For my next project, I decided to try to make an extra large serving board, like the ones I saw at Magnolia, that were selling for close to $100. A friend gave me this vintage ironing board for free. It was in my booth for a while, but it didn't sell. I created a pattern for the serving board handle, which I traced around. I then followed my pencil line with my jigsaw to cut out the handle. I smoothed the raw edges with my orbital sander and then I gave both the front and the back of the board a good coat of linseed oil. Linseed oil is food safe. In fact, it's often sold under the name cutting board oil. My serving board is huge and it's made from vintage wood and it didn't cost me a cent. These large glass jars were crazy expensive, and when I saw the ones in rustic crates, I knew I wanted to try to dupe them. I frequently see these large glass beverage dispensers at thrift stores for a few dollars. I picked this one up at Goodwill for $4. This one was missing its lid. I removed the tap and the metal ring that once held the lid, but I decided to keep the handle attached. I cut several lengths of wood, just slightly larger than the width of the jar. These strips of wood were cut from the legs of the ironing board. Since I don't have a nail gun, I used wood glue to attach the base and side pieces. When the glue was dry, I drilled pilot holes and then attached screws in each of the four corners. I then cut down some old scrap wood into thin strips to attach to the sides. I also cut out a square of plywood to create a base for the crate. I attached the base using screws. It was now sturdy enough that I could attach the side strips using nails. I really like how this crate turned out, and I'm so glad I was able to make use of the vintage ironing board legs. I added these dried silver dollar plants and turned the tap hole of the jug to the back so you don't even notice it. I found a huge vase full of this dried money plant at the thrift store. I kept the plants, but donated the vase back to them. When I saw these wicker and seagrass wrapped vases at Magnolia, 
I had several ideas for ways that I might dupe them. One of the easiest and cheapest ways is to use raffia. Because it's so lightweight, it is so easy to wrap it around and hot glue it to a glass vase. I cut several pieces of raffia to the same length and created a simple crisscross pattern on an old vase that I found. I then went around the top and the bottom of the pattern with longer lengths of raffia. You only need to use a drop of hot glue at the beginning and then again at the end to hold it in place. I also wrapped some around the top of the vase to mimic the inspiration piece. Because I used a vase and raffia that I already had, this project was totally free. I also wanted to try to wrap a vase using a thrifted placemat that I had. First, I cut off the thick edges, and then I cut it to fit the size of bottle I was using. To attach the placemat to the bottle, I used a lot of hot glue. I would roll the bottle a little bit, run a line of hot glue, roll the bottle a little more, run another line of hot glue until I got all the way around the bottle. I tore some small strips off of the placemat and attached them along the top and the bottom to create a border. I took another small strip and glued it over the seam to give it a more finished look. Once again, because I used things I already had, this project was free. However, I found this placemat for under $3 at Walmart. Like before, I cut off the thick edges and just rolled and hot glued it to my bottle. The hot glue did a really good job of holding the fibers of this placemat, and the seam blended in nicely. Even if you have to buy a thrifted vase, you could make this for four or five dollars. I also wanted to try braiding some natural fibers. First, I tried polished hemp cord, which I braided in a long strand and then wrapped around my vase with hot glue. Then I braided some four-ply jute cord. I thought both materials turned out nicely. I topped this barbecue sauce jar with a round lamp finial, but you can get a two inch wood ball from Hobby Lobby for a dollar. I hope you'll try one or all of these methods because these wrapped vases were so easy and cheap to make. I absolutely fell in love with these framed preserved florals at Magnolia, but there was no way I was going to spend $300 or even $200 on one. So I cut some flowers from my yard. I pressed them between sheets of parchment paper. I pressed down with the iron and held it for 15 seconds and then moved to a new spot and held that for 15 seconds. And I just kept repeating that process until I felt like the flowers were completely dried out. I found two matching frames at Goodwill for under $3 each that had that vintage look that I was going for. I pulled out the cardboard and the print, and then I flipped the print over so that the white side was facing up. I cut out a cheap piece of cotton fabric that I had, just slightly larger than the piece of cardboard. I folded the fabric around the edges of the cardboard and held it in place using glue stick. I cut small strips of black electrical tape to hold down the flowers and to give it that vintage botanical look. I printed out these vintage botanical labels, which I'll have linked in my description box. I attached those with glue stick as well. 
Before framing, I needed to vacuum up some of the crumbs that were coming off of the plant. I used brown paper tape to hold the cardboard in place, and I reattached the brown paper that I had cut off initially. So I will not be selling these in my booth because I absolutely love, 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 love how these turned out. Mine may not be genuinely vintage, but they only cost $3, not $300. If you don't want to mess with real flowers, another option is to print out vintage botanical images from websites like the Graphics Fairy. I'll link the images that I used in the description box below. Use a program to size your prints to fit frames you already own, or do like I did here and buy some inexpensive ones from the thrift store. If you want a larger size, you can print an 11 by 14 poster at Walmart for under $6, which is still a lot cheaper than what you can buy at Magnolia. Next, I wanted to try to dupe these botanical tea towels. I picked up a couple packages of plain towels at Walmart. They were under $3 each. I also picked up some iron-on transfers. Be sure to get the ones that say for light fabrics. They cost about a dollar per sheet. You just put them in your printer and print out exactly the same as you would for a piece of paper, except that you need to flip or mirror the lettering. Then you just cut out your design and words, place them where you want them, and iron them on. Iron for about a minute, and then immediately peel off the backing. And that's it. If you don't make your image too large, you can actually get two of them on one piece of transfer paper. So you could make these as cheaply as $2.50 each. However, I do recommend getting the slightly more expensive tea towels. They are much nicer. Now on to the two most requested dupes, the pressed flower coasters and the pressed flower wall plaques. Let's start with the coasters. Using oven-baked clay, I created four handful-sized balls of clay. I then rolled out each ball using an old glass vase as my roller. For two of the coasters, I used real flowers from my yard, and for two of the coasters, I used plastic plants. I laid the plant on top of the clay and then rolled over it just once or twice, and then I carefully peeled it away from the clay. The real flowers did tend to leave tiny little bits in the clay, which I dug out using my Cricut tools. I used an old metal lid to cut out a perfect circle, and then I used my Cricut tools again just to clean up the edges a bit. The clay stuck a bit to my wood cutting board, so I would recommend using something plastic, glass, or metal instead. I baked them for 15 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Oven-baked clay does not need a sealer, and I'm glad because I like the matte, natural look of these coasters. I contemplated several different ways to dupe these pressed flower wall plaques, some of which I would still like to try. However, in the end, I decided to go with air-dry clay. I divided my package of clay in half and I rolled out the first half and then I used the glass from an 8x10 picture frame to help guide me in cutting out a perfect rectangle. I decided to go with the fake plants for this project so I wouldn't have to dig out any small detritus. The air dry clay is much harder than the oven bake clay and it took me several tries to get a good plant impression. 
I wadded up the clay and rolled it out again several times. The oven baked clay is definitely much easier to work with. However, the air dry clay has one big advantage. It responds well to water. You can dip your fingers in water and smooth out any lumps, bumps, imperfections, and fingerprints before they become permanent. I made a hole at the top with the end of my X-Acto knife so that I would easily be able to hang it once the clay was dry. The package says that it dries in 24 hours, but even after putting mine outside in the sun, it took a good three days to fully dry. Although I really like these, they are definitely not as nice as the ones I purchased at Magnolia, but they didn't cost $38 either. Creating hanging baskets is super easy and uses things that you probably already have. Look around your home and see what baskets you already own. It shouldn't be a flat basket, but you don't want it too deep either. If it has a handle or a lid, remove them. Find a place where it's not likely to get bumped into, and then attach it to the wall with a nail or two. Then just fill it with fake flowers or your favorite decor item. I hung these two Goodwill baskets in my bathroom, and I wired the magnolia stems to the basket just in case someone did accidentally bump into them. Two projects using clay was not enough. I decided to make the wall pockets as well. For this project, I went with the oven baked clay because I still had a lot of that left. Even though the magnolia pockets were plain, I decided to make a fern leaf impression in mine. I used the magnolia pocket I had purchased as a guide to cut out the clay for the front and back of my pocket. I wanted to make sure that the two pieces stayed together, and so I pinched the edges very firmly. I tried to fix the imperfections, but oven-baked clay does not respond well to water. I was able to smooth it out a little using the glass vase. Once again, I cleaned up the edges using my Cricut tool, and I used the end of my X-Acto knife to create a hole for hanging. To keep the pocket from collapsing while it baked, I stuck a small trinket box inside, which I removed before the clay was completely dry. To remove imperfections and give the piece a smooth finish, oven-baked clay can be sanded with very fine grit sandpaper. The magnolia pocket was glazed, but I actually prefer the natural matte finish of the clay it gives it that special handcrafted appearance. So attempting to duplicate these woven pendants was way more time consuming than I expected. It probably took me eight hours in total to complete. First, I tore the fabric off of an old lampshade. You need one that has the metal ribs holding the top and bottom rings together. I used three skeins of ivory yarn from Dollar Tree to wrap the pendant. I stretched the yarn from the bottom ring to the top, going over the ring and then around the ring, and then down to the bottom, where I also went over the ring and then around the ring, and I just kept repeating this process. To create the pattern, I used strips of raffia, feeding them through the yarn, going over and under, over and under, and so forth. I would fold the ends over to the back and then use a drop of hot glue at each end to hold it in place. When weaving the next strand of raffia, I would do the opposite of what I had done on the first strand, so instead of over, under, over, under, I would do under, over, under, over. 
I just continued this process, adding strips of raffia of different lengths and in slightly different locations until I reached the top of the pendant. Honestly, I had intended on adding additional patterns with the raffia, but it just was so time consuming that I quit after I got this one pattern completed. I was actually pretty shocked at the prices of the pillows at Magnolia. I knew that I could create a textural pillow for much, much less. At Dollar Tree, I bought two green and two gray of what they call rugs. I cut off the folded edges of one rug, and then I cut off the tassels at one end of that rug. I folded the tasseled end over so that the tassels fell in the middle of the rug. Then, using my sewing machine, I sewed along the edges to hold that fold in place. I cut off the edges and the tassels on the second rug. I laid the tasseled piece face down on the plain piece and then I pinned them together. Using my sewing machine, I stitched up three of the edges. On the fourth edge, I left a hole big enough for my hand to fit through. I turned it right side out and filled it with stuffing from an old bed pillow. Then I hand stitched the opening closed, but you could use hot glue to close this opening. I realize my Dollar Tree pillows are not as big or as nice as the Magnolia pillows, but they didn't cost $50 or $100 either. They cost $2 each. And if you're lucky enough to find three or four matching rugs at Dollar Tree, you could make these pillows much larger. Well, you made it to the last project of the day. And if you're still here, you're going to love these hacks for creating inexpensive cloches. The next time you see one of these fake brass clock cloches at the thrift store, grab it up and rip that clock right out of there. Then spray paint the base in your favorite color of spray paint. I also added a wood round to mine, but that is totally unnecessary. Insert your favorite candle or decor item Put the glass cloche back on and voila! Here's another idea. Buy the Dollar Tree cloche, but don't use the plastic base. Use a candlestick instead. Well, I hope you got a lot of good ideas from today's video. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to do all the dupes that were suggested by viewers. So if there's still something that you'd really like to see, please let me know. Also, if you haven't watched last week's video, it's still not too late to enter the giveaway. I'll be announcing the winners next Tuesday. So until then, bye-bye for now.